Hi and welcome to another 5 minute tip. In this tip we're going to look at the current state to object command and how it operates on splines. So I'm just going to dive right in. Moving to the front view we can use the Bezier tool to create a nice curve. So the point of creating this curve is just to create a nice organic shape that we can do the example with. So we have a nice curve with a few different uh, few different intensities of angles in it. I'm going to go back to my camera view. We can see it in 3D. Now I'm going to create an end side that we can use to sweep along that spline. I like using an end side because it gives me really precise control over how many edges. In this case I'll use 8. Next step is to create a sweep nerves and create a sweep using these two spline profiles. Let's give it a nice color. And now we can begin looking at the technique. So, typically when you have a spline like this, Cinema 4D applies the default subdivision settings. So what that looks like is that when you select your spline, I'm going to go to the four pin view. This is actually the curved bit of the spline that I have selected here. So if I select one of the points and move it, you can see that. And by default, the subdivision of a spline is adaptive for intermediate points. Adaptive is a really good mode to play with because you can change the adaptive angle. Let's change it to 15, for instance and it will increase or reduce the number of edges but only where they are needed. So for instance, if I were to move this so that the start of the spline was practically straight, there would be a lot less edges in that area. In this case, almost none. Now, if you ever run into a situation where you need to use this spline, this imaginary spline, because our spline has one, two, three, four points, but the Cinema 4D spline that's being used internally to make this shape has many more because there are intermediate points. You can actually derive another spline with the intermediate points. I'll just reduce this to 10 so that we can see a little bit better. And notice how many points are along the start of the spline where I'm tweaking these handles. And notice how many points are at the end of the spline where I'm just going to make it a little bit of a tighter curve. Now, here's how it works. If I were to remove the spline from the hierarchy, just so we can see it a little bit better. If I select all, it still has four points. But you can right-click the spline and use the current state to object command. And this is going to create a new spline. See, it created a new spline right on top of the old one. Now, if I select the new spline, it has the same number of points as the derived spline that we were using. So, this could be useful to you if you created an adaptive spline initially, but perhaps it wasn't quite right and you wanted to get in there and modify the shape a little bit. Perhaps you wanted to take every other point on the spline sort of scale them to create a different look. Well, this is a way that you can actually create a spline based on the initial spline that Cinema 4D was placing intermediate points on. And of course, I can use this spline as my as the spline in my sweep nerves instead. And I get very similar results, except now I can precisely control where each point is. In addition, this spline itself can be turned into a linear, cubic, any one of these types. I'm going to make it a B spline. And it can then have adaptive or natural or uniform points. So it's a really interesting way to go from a really smart Cinema 4D spline that's sort of determining the number of points it should have on the fly. And you can just right click that spline. I'll do it again. You can, I'll go to the side view. So you can tweak 
how many points are in that spline. So what I often do is I would use a very low number of points and just use this as a starting point. And then I'll go in there and add more points to my liking. And then you can just right click it and you can say current state to object. That's going to give you a new spline with that exact number of points in the spline. So this was a very simple tip, kind of elementary. Um, let me know if you liked it. If you did, then I'll do more videos like this with really simple techniques. If it wasn't really the kind of videos you like to see from me, you should let me know that as well. Until next time, see ya.